Yeah. I mean, I can sort of briefly set the scene and you can feel free to add on to it. But, uh, you know, in order for folks, so for those who don't know, you know, in order to sign up to drive with Uber and Lyft, one of the requirements is that you pass a background check, right? And I believe Uber um, actually runs them through Checker, for example. And, um, you know, it's, I think as long as you haven't uh, murdered anyone recently, you usually pass. Um, and, you know, I think they also look at your driving report. Uh, I don't actually know all the details, but uh, I know that in, kind of the ideal situation, these things can move very quickly. It's really, you know, not an issue. It seems like more when these issues do arise, it's like either really smooth sailing or completely the opposite. There's nothing in between. Do you have anything else to add on sort of the high level of how background checks are involved in the process of getting gig workers on these platforms in the first place? Yeah. I mean, first of all, like you said, you, you can't, you can't open up the app with one, right? And, mm -hmm. and As a driver. Not just, yeah. Not just, and not just uh, Uber. I think Lyft is using Checker now. All of them now. Hmm. I mean, I've recently seen five different ones are using Checker. There's a few others as higher. Gay rates. companies. What's that? Gay companies are all yeah. using Checker, basically. They're all the driving, all the driving yeah. gig companies are using Checker. It seems there used to be a company called uh, uh, First Advantage Background uh, mm -hmm. Corp, and and they've they've been around, and Higher Right has been around. Those are a couple of the other big ones. But Checker has been doing all of them. And what, what we're really seeing is it's, it's not so much Checker getting a report and giving it to Uber and saying, mm -hmm. or Lyft and saying, here's what we got. It's yeah. more Checker doing the whole thing, making mm -hmm. the decision. Like they're already told mm -hmm. by Uber and Lyft, here's who we're hiring. Weed out these people. Don't even, you know, just block them. Just call them a rejection. So mm -hmm. actually Checker will be the one that makes the employment decision when it comes to the background. Checker decides whether you pass the background check or not. Really? And yeah, so it'll go through them. And when Checker says it's okay, then Uber finds out and, and your, your app gets turned on. And so they're they sort of it. playing a dual, so it sounds like Checker is sort of playing a dual role where they're actually running your background check and sort of, you know, doing that piece, checking, you know, checking the things that they need to check, but then also making some sort of semi quasi employment decision too. Sir, yeah, certainly the employer is the one telling Checker what the parameters are, mm -hmm. but Checker is the one that's ultimately, I mean, it, they're, they're just skipping the step. They're just saying, hey, if you, if you find it, you tell the person. Oh, really? You give them the report so they could look at it. You handle the dispute. So Checker kind of takes it and, and takes it all from there. And then they also, as you, as you probably know, it's not just to get hired. They're checking yeah. you every year or even every yeah. couple of months now. Um, it's. I've seen one person that was getting checked like four times a year for some reason. It just wow. was so, it was so random. It was <laughs> so random. And then I, other people, it's, it's once a year. Um, but I think the reason why they're stepping up is because as you said, it was the wild west and it's yeah. not a legal requirement for them to do a background check. It's just smart legally because mm. they're on notice that some drivers have done bad things yeah. And so now they have to know that that's a predator. You know, there's predators out there that will use, unfortunately, use this great service to mm -hmm. be predators. So they, they kind of have to do this for their, the safety of people, the safety of the customers and their own legal to watch their own butts, because now they know there's dangerous people out there. Um, but then there comes the requirements, legal requirements when they do. So there's no requirement mm -hmm. to do a background check. But when you do, there are all these regulations that they have to follow. And we tend to catch them on that. Is this typically a state by state issue? These background checks, do they kind of vary state by state, like other things like insurance and, you know, you know, some of these fields can be really complex just because every single state is different. I think a lot of these companies are doing it based upon what their risk, their risk people mm. are telling them. I Got think it. that's what it is. The more risk that there is, the more chance they're going to do a background check. Now, states can enact these laws. It's really peculiar because the Fair Credit Reporting Act preempts any state law. And it says, hey, states, you mm. can't create laws that we've already created this law. Now, there, if you want to afford some other protections that we haven't already done with this Fair Credit Reporting Act, you may try. So states have come out and said things like, well, you can't do a background check if the person's making less than X amount of dollars a year, or if mm -hmm. you do a background check, mm. we're going to say that you can't report uh, a conviction over this many years if mm. the job doesn't pay this much money. So there are Got it. parameters a state can put in there. 